Hi, I'm Rob Shore, Director of Product Marketing for Coriant. In this video, what I want to do is take a look at a different way to build a transport network. Right? What we're seeing is the demands on these transport networks and the flow of traffic in the network is changing pretty dramatically. And what we need is some more innovative, more creative types of transport solutions to handle these new types of traffic flows. So let's take a look at those traffic flows and what I'm talking about there. If you look at traditional transport networks, they really had a pretty straightforward problem to solve. Right? You had traffic that flowed in pretty uniform directions from the edge to the core or from the core to the edge. And the biggest problem these transport networks had to address is just bandwidth, right? keeping up with the bandwidth demands of these networks. But what we're seeing now is a lot of these services, the data centers moving into the metro, a lot of the applications moving into the metro, more and more consumers putting more of their data into the cloud. You see enterprise companies that are offloading their data centers into the cloud. And the result of all of this is just a dramatically more diverse set of traffic patterns. You have more people that need to connect to more locations with more types of applications. You have a lot of bursty traffic with large amounts of bandwidth that are only needed for a short period of time. And you have new types of connectivity patterns where these applications are actually starting to communicate with one another. So the net result is that you really need a different type of transport solution. Not only do you need to handle the bandwidth, the increased bandwidth resulting from these networks, but you also have to handle this diverse set of traffic patterns. And what you need is a transport network that's both flexible, but also a transport network that's adaptable. Right? That I can not only set up the network exactly the way I need to meet the traffic patterns of the moment, but I can also adapt as the traffic patterns change over time in the network. And the way I think about the difference between flexibility and adaptability, I kind of compare it to Legos versus Play-Doh. With Legos, they're very, very flexible, right? I can build anything I want with Legos. But if I want to change that thing that I've built, I really have to tear it all the way down and start again from scratch. Whereas with Play-Doh, I can not only build every, exactly what I want out of the network, but I can change the shape of that without having to tear anything down. And these networks really need both the flexibility to build what you want and the adaptability to change what you've built without having to tear it all the way down. So if this is what we need in transport networks, well, what's the problem with traditional transport solutions? When we look at a network engineer and when they go to build these networks, they really have two primary technologies uh, that they have to work with. They have circuit-based technology that includes SOD at SDH and OTN. And then they have packet-based technologies. In each one of these two infrastructure technologies, they each come with their own set of pluses and minuses. And in other videos, I go into more detail of exactly what those pluses and minuses are. Uh, but the fact is, is there are pluses and minuses to each one. And there's applications for each of these different transport methodologies in the network. So the problem with ter uh, traditional transport solutions is that even some of them that offer both of these options on the platform, the problem is that they, they often lock you into that technology once it's deployed. So they either have dedicated cards on the platform, a circuit card and a packet card, or even the more flexible platforms have it uh, where you can provision each port separately, a packet port or a circuit port. But the idea is once you provision a port or a card as a packet or a circuit, uh, you really end up locked into that, right? You can never change the way the traffic's handled on that individual port. And that's the real problem. So they often offer the flexibility required but they don't offer the adaptability uh, required by these networks. So what are we doing at Corian? Corian, we really, we've come up with a much better solution to handle the type of traffic demands placed on transport networks today. It's a solution that we call universal transport platforms. And what we've done is we've taken all of those functions you need in the network and integrated them into a single platform. But what we've also done is enable you to more flexibly provision the traffic on each port. Right? So not only can I tune in exactly what I want at that moment, a mixture of packet and circuits on a port, but I can also change the way I'm managing traffic on that port over time, both the flexibility and the adaptability. So let's take a look at exactly how this looks in a network. Take these universal platforms in the network, and you can now take traffic from the network and pull it into these devices, whether it's circuit-based OTN or channelized OTN or various types of packet traffic. I can pull those in, and then I can create these handoffs either into the network or to uh, locally, local devices. And I can take traffic from any one of these ports, and I can steer it to any one of the other ports in the system. And I can do that uh, both based on the circuit layer, uh, level, right, OTN, ODU2s, ODU0s, 
or I can even dig inside there and I can grab and um, start managing it by packets, right? Either inside an OTN container, an ODU2, uh, or it can come in as a straight 10 gig E, uh, or even inside a channelized OK OTN container, I can reach inside that ODU0 and pull out individual packet flows. And I can now take these packet flows from anywhere in the system, irrespective of how they came in, and I can steer them into these very aggregated handoffs. Right? This is going to dramatically improve the efficiency of the network because I can have these aggregated handoffs, which is a collection of traffic from a number of ports in the system, uh, and it'll really make these uh, resources, I can more efficiently use these resources, I have aggregated interfaces to those now. But it's even more flexible than that because not only can I handle these as packets, I can really handle them as packets any way that I want. I can read those header information on those incoming packets, and I can really switch the traffic at any uh, layer I want based on any type of header information. So I can do it based on VLAN, I can do it based on LSP, I can do it based on pseudowire, and I can even do it based on IP addresses. Now, I'm not a router, right? I'm a switch, so I'm not going to run all those complicated routing, uh, network routing protocols. But if I have some higher layer device, let's say an SDN controller uh, that's running those network-based routing protocols for me, it can actually instruct me to switch based on IP headers because I can read any layer on the header that I want and I can switch based on that information. So you end up with this imminently flexible and adaptable device that can switch and steer traffic at any layer regardless of how that came in. And now this applies not only to what I'm doing on the locally dropped traffic, but I can do that on the transit traffic as well. I can now take a, a collection of traffic, whether it's circuit or packet, from any of the ingress ports, and I can aggregate that all together into the egress port, right now creating this uh, external, this line side port that's extremely efficiently utilized with a mixture of circuit and packet traffic, where that packet traffic can be gathered from anywhere and, and managed at any layer. Now that covers the efficiency side, right, the flexibility side of initially setting this up. Well, what's even more interesting with these uh, solutions, right, these universal transport solutions, uh, is the adaptability that they provide. Because not only can I set this up as a circuit to start with, if later I find there's a traffic flow in here that needs to be diverted to a different location, I don't need to completely redesign everything. I don't need to uh, install new ports. I can actually reach inside this OTN container and I can pull out that individual traffic flow, again, based on VLAN, LSP, pseudo-wire, and potentially IP, and I can steer that individual traffic flow where I want. So again, you're getting not only the flexibility to do anything you want on any individual port, but the adaptability to change the way you're managing the traffic on that port and to do it frame by frame at virtually any layer. This is the nature of a universal transport platform. And if we take a look at the economic impact this has on the network, we can see based on studies that we performed, uh, savings of greater than 46% uh, in core networks, savings of more than 50% in metro networks, but even this doesn't really tell the whole story. Because most of these studies, and these are studies done on real customer traffic, so real customer networks, uh, but these studies are mostly done on a static set of traffic demands. And the real benefit of these types of solutions is not what they do with static demands, but how they can adapt to changes over time. So with these really eminently adaptable solutions, uh, you'll see even significantly greater savings over time as you need to adjust to different types of traffic flows, which you can now do using the same resources. So this is the concept of universal transport platforms, and this is exactly what we've done uh, with the Corient Terra. This is really the world's first truly universal platform where I can manage traffic on every single port any way that I want and then adapt the way I'm managing that over time. And this is really evident in the actual interface cards on the platform. We really have two primary interface cards on the platform, uh, one with 10 gig ports, one with 100 gig ports. And they're actually the same card, just with different physical uh, front panel interfaces. But the ideas on these is that, you know, I don't have an OTN card, a packet card, a sonic card. I don't even, not even restricted to provisioning each port on the card as uh, circuits or packets. The idea is on each and every one of those ports, I can flexibly configure it exactly the way that I want, manage traffic frame by frame, and then adapt that over time. And now this is just a single platform where you really start seeing the power of this uh, is when you take this across the entire Corient portfolio of transport solutions. You now have the same capabilities across the entire infrastructure where I have these knobs that I can turn and dial in exactly the right kind of functionality that I want, exactly where I want it, and then I can adapt the way I'm handling that traffic over time as my needs change, as my service demands change.
So this is the concept of this end-to-end -end universal transport type network and what we built with the Corian MTERA uh, universal transport platform. So hopefully this makes sense, right? Both the benefits of the flexibility in terms of grooming and the benefits of the adaptability that these solutions can provide. Hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, and that brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to learn more about either the Corient MTERRA specifically or about Corient solutions uh, and products in general, please visit us at corient.com. So hopefully you found this video interesting and thank you for watching.